Two budget phones, one big and one small, but which is the better buy? I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and this is the Boost Max versus the Moto G. We've seen countless budget Android phones over the years, but for the most part, they all have come with a series of compromises. Last year, Motorola showed us that doesn't always have to be the case. It released the Moto G, which doesn't exactly have the best specifications, but provides consistent, reliable performance. And it sells for only a fraction of the price of other no-contract smartphones. ZTE wants to apply the same concept to larger smartphones, since practically every so-called phablet to date has also come with a premium price tag and over-the-top specs. The question is, can the Boost Max from ZTE compete with a similarly spec and priced device like the Moto G? Let's find out. From a design perspective, these two phones have very little in common. The Moto G is a lot like the Moto X with its quaint, simple build. As you would expect any $179 smartphone to be, it's utterly bare bones with no flair. Just a blank front glass with a small cutout for the speaker grill and a removable backplate which can be replaced with various colored aftermarket plates from Motorola. The Boost Max seems to have taken a lot of its design cues from older HTC devices, except it's made almost entirely of plastic, not metal, with a two-tone back featuring a matte finished silver and dark gray soft touch accents at the top and bottom. That said, it's a very nice faux metal, which is easily mistaken as a lightweight aluminum. And then there's the question of size. The Moto G has a very manageable 4.5 inch display with respectable dimensions and weight, 129.9 millimeters tall, 65.9 millimeters wide, and 11.6 millimeters thick, hitting the scales at just 143 grams. The Boost Max, as a self-proclaimed phablet featuring a 5.7 inch display, will be a two-handed device for most. It's 30.1 millimeters taller, 15.4 millimeters wider, and 58.3 grams heavier. However, it is 2.2 millimeters thinner. As far as build quality goes, however, we'd rate these two as comparable. They're both incredibly solid for their comparatively small price tags. The insides are where these two are most alike. The Moto G comes with 8 or 16 gigabytes of storage, 1 gigabyte of RAM, a Snapdragon 400 chipset with a 1.2 gigahertz quad-core CPU, a 5 megapixel camera, and a 2070 milliamp hour battery. The Boost Max also comes with 1 gigabyte of RAM and a Snapdragon 400 SoC with a max inbuilt storage of 8 gigabytes. But its processor is a dual-core crate CPU, its camera is rated at 8 megapixels, and the battery is 3200 milliamp hours. It also has a microSD card slot where the Moto G does not. Both have Wi-Fi BGN, lack NFC, and the Boost Max has LTE support but is limited to Boost Mobile, while the Moto G can be purchased unlocked and used on GSM networks globally. The real difference here, however, is display quality and size. Both the Boost Max's 5.7-inch display and the Moto G's 4.5-inch display are 720p resolution. The respective densities of those displays are 258 and 326 pixels per inch, and the difference is largely visible to the naked eye. The Moto G's display isn't quite as vivid as some panels, but it's far more accurate in color reproduction than the Boost Max, which airs heavily on the warm side. The Moto G's display is noticeably sharper, has deeper blacks, wider viewing angles, and looks better all around. Apart from size and display, there isn't much separating the Moto G and the Boost Max, but that story changes once you get to the software and performance. The Moto G originally shipped with Jelly Bean version 4.3, but was quickly updated to KitKat 4.4. The Boost Max ships with Jelly Bean 4.1, and that should mean something to anyone who has experience with budget Android devices. KitKat has been optimized to run well on low-end hardware, with a minimum requirement of 512 megabytes of RAM. It only takes a few minutes with each device to see those effects, but we'll cover performance in more detail in a minute. Outside the versions of Android, these two devices ship with somewhat similar software experiences, which are very close to stock Android. They feature a virtually unchanged launcher, and each comes with a small helping of preloaded bloat. The Moto G comes with helpful features like trusted devices and Motorola Assist, with preloaded services like Motorola Migrate, Help, and Motorola Privacy. Trusted Devices allows you to keep the device unlocked when connected to select Bluetooth devices. To be concise, Motorola has added just a few features on top of the stock experience to keep bloat down and boost user experience. The Boost Max doesn't deviate too far from that, but it comes loaded with a handful of bloat from Boost Mobile, such as Boost's own Music Store, Boost Zone, Air G, Lumen Toolbar, Kingsoft Office, Mobile ID, Sound Tracking, TouchPal X, and Swipe. The built-in features include a Dolby Digital Plus EQ app and what ZTE calls Smart View or a split-screen mode for running two applications simultaneously. This works with any installed application and works almost exactly like Samsung's multi-window feature. The only other notable changes ZTE has made are to the quick settings toggles in the notification shade, the lock screen, and some custom icons and widgets. 
So how noticeable are the benefits of KitKat on the Moto G? Lest we forget the Moto G also has a quad-core CPU compared to the dual-core CPU in the Boost Max, but it's hard to believe that these are both powered by a Snapdragon 400. The Moto G is smooth, snappy, and consistent. You can definitely bog the phone down if you're doing a lot of app switching and graphic-intensive gaming, but the overall experience is one of, if not the best, in a budget phone. It's very impressive. At first, I thought the Boost Max may offer a similar experience, but just a few days into using the phone, it was clear that wasn't the case. The phone constantly hangs and freezes when loading apps, it stutters when flipping through home screens or pages in the app drawer, and even on Wi-Fi, web pages and streaming videos take ages to load. Other times, the Boost Max works well, but it doesn't take a lot of effort to conjure up some serious lag. We still haven't done our full testing of the battery life on the Boost Max, but we're already certain it will provide much more stamina per charge than the Moto G. The 3200mAh battery has constantly powered us through a day and a half with ease. The Moto G will likely need to be charged every day, and the Boost Max, provided you can find some service, will not. Camera performance isn't stellar on either of these devices, but when you consider the price, they're not horrible. Both the Moto G's 5 megapixel camera and the Boost Max's 8 megapixel camera have the tendency to wash out images, and in certain situations, it's as if the Moto G artificially boosts colors and provides unnatural saturation. However, we had less trouble with the Moto G than with the Boost Max with autofocus and taking blurry shots, even with the hardware shutter key on the Boost Max. Rest assured, neither of these phones' cameras will blow you away, but you can expect a more consistent and controlled experience on the Moto G, even if the Boost Max has more software options than the stock camera app. So which of these budget phones is a better deal? It depends on a couple of different things, like service plans and the preference in device size. The Boost Max is available for $299 and currently comes with unlimited calls, text, and data for $35 per month. Boost service typically starts at $55 per month and eventually drops to just $40 for unlimited everything. The catch is that Boost service is not necessarily available everywhere. The Moto G starts at just $179 and works on practically any bring-your-own-device prepaid service. But at the end of the day, the Moto G is by far the better bargain. It costs just over half the price of the Boost Max, and it offers a much more consistent, reliable experience with far fewer performance hiccups. We're hopeful the KitKat update will help the Boost Max, but we're not sure if or when that will ever happen. Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more videos like this one in the future, be sure to click the thumbs up button below and subscribe to the channel. Find us in all the usual places, Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus at PocketNow. I'm Taylor Martin, you can find me on Twitter at CasperTech, and I will see you next time.